some lace, some florals, some ribbon, some fabric, some cardboard and a glue gun. Everything we need to make some hats. So come on, no time for chatting. Let's get on with crafting. To make the hat, we've got to start with some cardboard. Now, my cardboard's a bit bent from being up in the attic. It's got hot and cold and hot and cold and it's, it's got a bit of a curve in the middle. But we're going to work with it. It could be a challenge, but we'll see. Draw an oval that will fit the head of the person you want to make it for or whatever size you're guessing. I made a template because I'm going to make a lot of them. Now, it's very difficult to draw on corrugated cardboard. As you can see, my oval isn't perfect, but that doesn't matter. As long as you've got plenty of room, you'll be fine. Always err on making the hole too big rather than too small because if you make it too small, there's nothing you can do. If you make it too big, you can just add a little bit of wadding or something in the inside or a layer of cardboard to shrink it down. So now I've done a line down halfway and a line across halfway. And this is the centre point of the hat. Get a ruler, preferably one not covered in hot glue. And we're going to be measuring seven inches from the centre and making a mark. And this is to make the hat that goes up on the sides. If you don't want the hat to go up on the side, you just want like a flat brim. Then you measure four inches or three inches, whatever size brim you want, from this line all the way around. To do the curvy bit, this is what you need. And now for a rather challenging bit, you've got to join all these up with as smooth a curve as you can manage. But don't stress over this, take your time. Just give yourself... Get yourself all relaxed because if you tense up, it'll be even more difficult to do. And if you miss something, it's only a millimetre or two out, don't worry. I'm going to use a Stanley knife and, oh, it's a Dewalt knife, <laughs> we always call them Stanley knives. I'm putting my scruffy cutting mat down because I don't want to damage my nice one. Mark both pieces of cardboard with front on and back. I'm just putting a B for back. Bring out your next piece of cardboard. You can't really see what's going on, can you? You can't see all of this. Turn this upside down. Draw around it and cut it out, which is very difficult if your cardboard is as bendy as mine. You've got your B, you've got your B, so that's the back, put them together and you're going to get something roughly the same size, probably not identical because, especially with me, my cardboard kept jumping about, but that doesn't matter, make it as close to perfect as you can, but perfection's overrated when it comes to crafting, unless you're selling your items, in which case you've got to make a bit more effort. What you need to do now is turn them around. And then if you can see the lines of the corrugation, very lightly score down those lines. And this is very difficult, I find, to actually keep them in line. I quite often wander off into the next little section. Now you can't make a much more basic type of hat, but I just think this one with the curvy sides is a lot nicer. And that's why it's taking a little bit extra work but well worth it. And now, when you bend this, she makes a lovely curve, which if you just get a normal piece of cardboard, I'll show you with this, and try bending it, it just doesn't work. It's a bit okay, but it's not very okay, is it? And then do the same on the other side. This is rather time consuming. Get in the right mood for it. Pop on some music or pop on a video or something like that. And then you can relax as you're doing it and they don't feel rushed. I find when I rush, oh, I make a terrible mess. And then do the same on your other piece. Now 
now is a good idea to just either run your finger down the little slits like that or I'm going to use this which is actually a bowling tool for making um, mandalas things like that but I just find it saves my fingers so if you've got any issues with your hands something like this or I suppose even the end of a pencil might work just don't press too hard Now decide how tall you want the brim to be. I've gone for five inches. I get a horrible feeling my cardboard was running a little bit wonky on the bottom edge. So it may be a bit out of line. We'll find out. Now, you also need this to be able to fit right the way around the brim. So the easiest way to check this out is to get one of the circles you kept from the centre. Start it at the one end and roll it completely once to the other end and you want that much and a little bit more i am there <laughs> so i can take some of this off and now you want to be doing that cutting thing down every rib of the corrugated paper again or the corrugated cardboard and this is the point where you can get horribly overconfident and <laughs> go straight through your cardboard I'm not even going to look a minute because I've probably gone through in one or two places. And now, other than where I've cut too deeply, it's got a nice bend to it. Look at that. Very flexible. And we're going to ignore these bits, okay? <laughs> Don't worry, we can fix those. Now, there are two ways of doing the next stage. You can either glue it directly into the hat like that. Or you can rebate the cardboard by taking a quarter of an inch off all the way along, but not the right the way through, picking off the corrugated edge and the top edge. You're just left with the outer edge and then put that in there. Now, that's what I usually do. But for this one, I'm going to cheat and do it a little bit faster. So being on camera is going to take forever. Otherwise, it's a better job, but this is a quicker job. So pop this into a rough oval and then get your hat brim, pop it over the top with the smoother side facing up, not the cut side. And where's the front? This is the front. I've got it marked with an F and a little bit of hot glue on the edge. Pop it into place like that. And just if you need some extra help, Use a bit of washi tape to help you along your way. If you're going to do that, I would suggest you break a few pieces off first, because otherwise you're getting a right knot. And then keep doing that all the way around the hat. Making sure it's nice and level. And then a bit of washi tape to help support it. Now, this bit is actually easier if you've made the rebate because it sits on the top of the rebate. But this is so much faster. I reckon this probably is going to save me oh, 30 minutes on how long it usually takes to make one of these hats. So I'd rather show you this way. We don't want to needlessly make it longer. I'm going to take that piece of washi tape off now because it's not really doing any good because we've got the basis of the hat in place. And then just carry on all the way around till we get to the back. Now with other hats I've made, I've gone on and finished off the hat like this, but it is very fiddly to try to decorate. So on this one, I'm going to cheat a little bit and decorate as we're going along. Turn this upside down and take your masking tape off. Trim any annoying raggedy bits. And then out with whatever fabric you're going to be using. I'm using this old curtain lining. And I'm going to cover the bottom of this brim with fabric. You can use a fabric glue or whatever sort of glue you want. I'm using glue stick because I find it lies much smoother. If you use hot glue, it can be very lumpy bumpy. Now being extremely generous with the fabric, I'm going to put it over the bottom of the hat, smooth it down, but make sure you've got plenty here to tuck back over the brim. You may need to reposition it to get it lying really nicely. 
And if you're very conscientious, you could iron it, which would make it much easier to do. Now cut up to the edge of the hat, just in four places, just so that it's got a little bit of manoeuvrability. Then take the other part of the hat. There's B, there's B, so we know that's the back. Pop this over the top. So it fits. Yes, it fits very nicely. So now out with the glue gun. And first of all, glue the front together. Plenty of glue. Give it a push and hold it in place till it's got a firm grip. Now go to the back and do the same. And now this is where the magic happens. Because, move that fabric out the way. If I bend this up now, I can glue this into place bent and it'll stay there. So, lots of hot glue. pieces together slide them to where you want them to be oh i'm gonna leave this one quite open you can make your choice then whether you want this a really tight curve or a really loose curve i'm going for quite a loose one run a hot glue around the edge and i do the same on the other side so pop your hot glue on push them together turn the curve up and Try to make sure both curves are the same. Now take your scissors and you'll see that the top always is longer than the bottom. So we've got to trim that off. Make sure you don't cut your fabric. You're going to need a piece of fabric now that will wrap right the way around. And if you haven't got enough, it's not a problem. You can join this if necessary. Then starting at the back, put yourself some hot glue, put your fabric on, make sure it is poking down, if you possibly can manage, into the little gap between the brim and the top. Just be prepared, you will need a lot of hot glue if you're doing this. If you're going for a really ultra elegant look, you will have to iron your fabric. But because this hat is going to be a shabby chic type hat, I haven't got to worry. <laughs> when you're back at the back, make sure you've got an overlap. Cut or tear it. And then give it a nice neat fold. And glue the fold into place. And I'm going to get my bone folder and just run around the bottom, making sure it is poked in that little gap. If yours is a bit tight and you don't have a little gap, then don't worry, just poke it into the corners. You can see some places I haven't quite got a gap. Unless you're a really accurate person, I'm sure a lot of you are, in which case you'll have every measurement perfect. Now snip down to the height of the cardboard rim. You can just fold this in if you want to like that, but I'd rather snip it and glue it because I want it firm because we're going to put the top in and attach it to this so I don't want any extra stress on it unless it's well glued. And then come around, hot glue, poke it over, all the way around the hat. If you're just going to be making the cardboard hat, then of course you'll be skipping anything that involves fabric, but you'll be doing exactly the same process. Now we want to cover the top of the brim. You can snip things in a bit tighter here, or you may have already done it very well measured. I haven't, I'm always over generous because I'm so bad at measuring and cutting. Starting at the front, bring the fabric up and over and glue it near the base of the crown, as close as you can. Make sure you hold it until the glue is set. Well, I absolutely hated that. So taking it all off the top half of the brim, the bottom half's still there. Uh, before I do any more, I've got to put the top on. So to get to the brim, I'm going to trim these further in like that. And then round much neater. And then up with the hot glue again. And glue these into place. 
Now I'm going to stand the hat up on the cardboard, draw around the inside, the back and the front again, and then cut that out. Well, I have to say, this is definitely the messiest craft I've ever done. I can't find anything. It's lucky I'm not doing this real time, otherwise you'd be bored stiff with me disappearing to find things. So now take the top half of your hat, or the... What would this be? Is it the crown? Put on your fabric. Cut around the edge. Snip as far as the cardboard. You can, if you want to, put a little bit of wadding in at this point between the cardboard and the fabric if you wanted to have a little bit of a soft top. I think I'm going to prefer it with like the cardboard underneath it rather than the wadding. But I think either way would look effective. And glue all these tabs over. Nice and firm. I don't really need that on, do I? <laughs> I'm not going to burn myself on a glue stick. So this is going to be glued inside like that. I think the easiest way to do this is going to be pop it upside down. And then start gluing it into place. So now make yourself some three cord braids out of torn strips of material. Mine are about an inch and a half wide. And then cover the join on the top of the hat. Now wrap around the inside of the brim with one layer. And then wrap around the outside with a layer. And then you can fill in the middle, but you want to leave. There should be a little bit of space along either side so that you can glue some flowers in. If you want to, you can make thinner braids and make sure they're completely full. I suppose you could squash them down a bit, but I want this gap because it's going to be so much easier to glue my flowers into place. Now out with a hot glue, and I'm going to put a run of flowers around the side here because I think they'll just look absolutely gorgeous and now you can see they stick so much easier because they're sticking directly to the cardboard I've cut myself some lengths of tool lace I'm going to put a pipe cleaner around halfway across fold them in half so you know where halfway is tighten your pipe cleaner and then chop off the ends uh, with some hot glue lots of it make sure everything is glued down firmly as well spread hot glue everywhere and then attach this near the back of the hat now we're going to add some florals to the back I think this needs to be really, 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 really flamboyant. And I like really, 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 really flamboyant. Let's put this up on something. There you go. You can see what's going on now. I picked up these flowers in a basket from a car boot sale and they were well past their sale by date. They were in a basket and everything had faded away. But that was perfect because I knew one day I was going to use it for a shabby chic decoration. And what do you know? They come in handy. This is the basket full I had. I think I paid a pound. Well, that took a while, but it was definitely worth it. I absolutely love it. Now, if you want to finish it off better, you can cover the insides. It's not a problem. It's not a difficult job. It's just that I'm not selling this, so it doesn't matter if it doesn't look perfectly finished. I just want it to go on display because I love it so much. It's almost like a big wedding cake, isn't it? Right, let's see what this looks like on a hat stand. If you 
you're enjoying this video so far, then please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I wouldn't want you to miss any of my videos because I love taking you along on my crafting adventures and disasters. A bit of both. <laughs> All right, no time for chatting. Let's get on with crafting. Using this foam like this when I finished a hat and you can see what it looks like when you haven't been decorating it as you go along. This is what you end up with. And using this base, this is what I came up with. And it's this. I covered the top first with some spotty fabric, then came around the side with a stripy fabric and then a lovely bit of ribbon. And the bottom I covered with a corduroy in a like deep burgundy wine colour. Then I put some foliage around the edges, some flowers on the back and lots of dangly bits. I do love dangly bits. Let's have a look what this looks like up on my display. your favourite? Do you like the, the shabby chic one or do you like this one? So what would you do with a hat base like this? I'll see you all next time but until then don't forget happy crafting and have fun! Bye!